You've heard the old saying, you can uh, bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, you can take a regulator to a problem, but you can't make it regulate. And we've got numerous cases in the last 10 to 15 years of, of state and federal regulators being made aware of problems at this particular company. And they, they go out and investigate or they ask for documentation uh, and then they issue some sort of a general reprimand or in some cases do nothing at all. It's an absolute tragedy without any question that 32 people have died and it's very unlikely that that's going to be the end of the, um, uh, end, end of the death toll. Uh, we have got to get our regulatory authority both at the state and federal level when you have what appears to be a bad actor like this company you have got to get the regulators to use the authority the states have given them and the Congress has given them to, uh, to stop these practices. And if you read the reports of both the majority and the minority staff uh, that's prepared for this hearing, there are repeated instances of where inspectors just walking through could, could see obviously contamination in the various uh, batches of, of, of this particular product. And it's been going on for 10 to 15 years. So. I want to thank uh, Chairman Upton and Subcommittee Chairman Stearns and Ranking Member Waxman and uh, DeGette for on a bipartisan basis immediately calling for this hearing, immediately asking that uh, the facts be made present. And let's find out what the facts are and then do what's necessary to put a stop to this once and for all. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I mean, we have a tragedy <coughs> of... Um, significant proportions here. 32 people have died, probably more will. Um, we've got a bipartisan investigation for this subcommittee. And we understand that, you know, business as usual is not acceptable. <clears throat> but having said that, um, apparently the FDA has decided this is, this is something that they can use to be able to get more authority to regulate or inspect certain certain transactions that compounding pharmacies do. If there really is a lack of regulatory authority at some level, then that's a legitimate policy recommendation. But if there's not a lack of regulatory authority in existence at state and federal law right now, then it's unnecessary. And my first question is to both Dr. Hamburg and Dr. Smith. Are y'all both stating that under current state and federal law, neither the state nor the FDA had the authority to seize these drugs or to shut this, this, this company down? I think it's important to understand I, that. I, want an, I, don't, I don't need a long, I think it's important, either if the, if the state of Massachusetts doesn't have the authority and the FDA doesn't have the authority, that's one thing. But we have a warning letter, 2006, issued by the FDA, and this is before you were the commissioner. It says, failure to promptly correct these deviations may result in addition, additional regulatory action without further notice, including seizure or injunction against you and your firm. So in 2006, in the FDA's warning letter, it was the thought at that time that the FDA had sufficient authority. And Dr. Smith, on behalf of the Massachusetts, she's only been on the job three weeks, so we can't hold her liable for what happened, you know, ten years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. But uh, I don't think there's any question that if Massachusetts felt there was a violation, they had the authority to shut it down. So, you know, I think we ought to work on using the authority that we have as opposed to trying to get additional authority uh, at the federal level. The FDA went in and inspected this particular company on at least two different occasions. And as far as I can tell, other than issuing one warning letter, didn't do anything at all. The the truth is that in the initial inspections, we worked very closely with the Massachusetts Board of Pharmacy, which has the 
responsibility for licensure and oversight on a day-to-day -day basis of compound So, pharmacies. again, go so back and answer my to, question. To make sure that the, the contaminated product was recalled and, and not um, continuing to put people at risk. Our first priority. So you're saying you do, the FDA did have the authority or did not have the authority? We worked closely with Massachusetts who had Can you ever give a straight answer to the question? For the oversight Either you of do that or you facility. don't. I think, you know, what, what is very clear is it that. What's very clear is that you don't want to answer the question. No, it's, it's, it's complicated and that's reflected here. But, but the, the responsibilities are different. What FDA has clear and strong responsibility for an oversight Let me ask of Dr. Smith. is drug manufacturers, Dr. which Smith, are held to a different does standard. Your state, Compounding does your state agency are, have the authority to shut this company down if you see a clear violation of the law? Yes or no? Yes, it does. And okay. in fact, thank you. you. Now, if you but the state of least you got, has the oversight responsibility for compounding pharmacies on a day-to-day -day basis. FDA has a different set of authorities and the challenge is that these authorities, as evidenced by that map, are fragmented and what enforcement actions we can take have to be seen through different lenses in different parts of the country. Right. We don't have clear... I'm going to try, I'm gonna try one more time, Dr. Hamburg. Under current law, does the Food and Drug Administration of the United States of America have authority over uh, adulterated drugs? We have authority over adulterated drugs, and we can Thank take you. actions in relation to that. Okay. One from Texas have one additional minute, and I would ask... By unanimous you consent, so ordered. I'll be happy to yield to my good friend, the gentleman from Michigan. Huh? I thank my friend. Commissioner... Two agencies here have dropped the ball. The Massachusetts agencies had to fire its head because it didn't do its job. Your agency, and I don't want you to be defensive, I just want you to recognize a hard fact. Your agency did not use your power to define really who was. is a manufacturer. Here you've got an agency that is that in just one has issued has sold over seventeen thousand doses in something like 23 states. Don't you have the authority to define who's a manufacturer and who's a compounder? And if you do, why didn't you do it? The problem is that the current legal regulatory framework says either you're a compounder or you're a manufacturer. And, and there you in fact may define is... both, may you not. You have that authority and you did not do it. And I think the gentleman I, I, for The yielding. concern though is that if it's all or nothing that way, then these facilities, if they were defined as manufacturers... Mr. we are trying to solve the problem. This is not an issue where you are here to defend yourself. If you choose to do that, you're going to have a very hard time in this committee. Uh, we do not tolerate that kind of foolishness, and I, I would assure you that you are putting your head in the noose. I would urge you to just cooperate with us and with my good friend and give us the answers that we need All right, now, so that you can address your If problems. I can reclaim the just, time that Just no to, to recognize where we are, we had a unanimous consent to give Mr. Dingle one minute, and the time now belongs to Mr. It's going to, if you finish up and yeah, I am very quickly. To, to... I want to, I want to be explicitly clear. If there really is a regulatory gap, based on the record that I've reviewed, I don't believe there is, but if there is, I suggest there is a bipartisan coalition on this subcommittee and full committee that will move legislation to correct it. If, however, there is no regulatory gap, I also think there is a bipartisan coalition on this subcommittee and full committee to work to make sure that the state and the federal agencies with jurisdiction work together to solve this problem and to prevent it from happening in the future. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.